Hi, it's Jill with Park Flex. I have not filmed in so long that I almost feel like I've forgotten how. Anyway, been very, very busy now with my two new babies, grandbabies, I should say. And um, I don't know if I filmed since Burke was born. If I haven't, just to give everybody heads up, my 12th grandchild, he came three weeks early if I haven't already uh, mentioned this, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself. But anyway, he was a few weeks early, weighed in at 5.15, um, and is, <laughs> if he was any cuter, he'd be illegal. He's just an absolute doll, just like his older brother. He looks just like his older brother that is the, the um, other child that my daughter and her second husband have had together. They, they, I forgot to flip this tail around. <laughs> Duh. So that means I'm going to have to redo that. Anyway, that's going to put a little bit of a damper in this. I'm sorting the pieces out here. What I'm going to be showing you, because lately, guys, I've been getting tons, tons of questions. And I have not had time. I seriously have not had time. I barely have time to do the things that I have to do. School is out. My grandkids are out of school and I take care of um, four of them full time and during the week. And now since my daughter's had Mila, my five month old granddaughter, I take care of her full time, which uh, Kind of, I, I mean, I don't have much, I don't have any free time. I don't, sh shouldn't say I don't have much free time. I have zero free time anymore um, since the, oh, since school got out. Um, what, what, so I'm going to try and answer as many as I can as I do this. This is going to be some repetition here, and there's going to be some pausing in and out. I'm going to have to stop and pick up again because I forgot I left a bunch of pieces that go with this in the crib drying. I multitask and I also use all sorts of things um, in my house for multi purposes. And the crib is a drying mat for me when I'm doing large projects. And I'm gonna have to pause because I gotta grab my sticks, my pegs, and uh, the rest of the pieces that go here. Then I'm gonna kind of go over how I do the piecing. Still getting a lot of questions regarding the two foot pieces, how I make the print so big, what printer I use. And so this video will be a lot of repetition and it will also be a lot of updates about my grandkids and my family. What I always do, I was talking about my family and all my videos and we will not miss out telling something new, I'm sure of. So I'm gonna have to pause you to get the stuff I need and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, I'm going to be cutting up my uh, 3 16 inch pieces, and I don't believe these are 3 16 so let me check this with one of my bases. I thought I was all ready to rock and roll, and apparently not. Okay, let me see. I'm going to duck under here a minute and grab a few of my bases to see if this one will work. Because I might have some problems. Nope, works. Perfect. So, anyway, while I'm cutting these up, I'll kind of tell you <laughs> recently something that happened. Just tell you a story while I cut these. I cut these pegs to put on these pieces, and you only need three or four inches on them. And that's what I'm going to do right now, but this is not. And then I just keep them in a little tin bucket here. But this cutter is not working that well. Let me try and grab a different one. I've got a few of them. I gotta tell you a little story though that I find kind of humorous, but I, you know, I'm I'm the kind of person that that um, I I don't like to live uh, live or my life with <laughs> with enemies. Period. I don't like confrontation, um, and I always give everybody the benefit of the doubt. So, you know, instead of if I if somebody's acting a certain way, rather than than say, boy, boy, what a you know nasty person or whatever. I always think about, well, you know what? We don't know what's going on in their lives. Not everybody, you know, people have things in their lives. Oh, just see that. Um, that, I don't know where that, where that went. Mm. Um, that we don't 
always know. That might be one of the reasons for the way that they treated you or something like that. As a matter of fact, for an example, is I called my daughter this morning just to say good morning. I call my kids every morning just to see how they're doing and how the kids are doing, the grandkids that I hadn't seen in eight hours. A uh, little annoying I am. But anyway, um, my son-in-law, this guy is never, I, I mean, my daughter and him have been married 15 years, I think. And this guy is just, he's such an angel. Just absolutely adore him. And he has never, I've never seen him cross. You know, with one of the kids when they're misbehaving, I've seen him, you know, reprimand or whatever. But when I called him this morning, he was really sharp on the phone when I asked him a question. His answer, and I'm going, okay, Mark, what'd I do? What'd I do to you? You know, and he said, what do you mean? I said, well, I asked you a question and you answered me like, you know, you were mad. And you've never done that. And, and apparently my daughter didn't feel good. So daddy got to be 100% in charge of the four kids, which includes caring for the four month old baby, which normally because my dog, daughter nurses, she kind of stays in, in, in charge of the baby. And then he takes is in charge of the older ones and they weren't behaving. So he was a little on edge. But after I said that, he, he would change the way he was talking. But I was sitting there thinking, you know, you don't realize your expectations. I take care of my grandkids and, and I can be very, very stern because I have to be. Um, we have a pool. It's important that my, kid, my grandkids listen and they don't go up there ever for any reason without an adult on the, up, um, by the pool, go through the gate. Um, and if they do the certain things, I'm just really strict about it, especially since I have them full time. And I, um, sometimes I wonder if they think I'm over strict. My daughter said the other day, you have too many rules. And I said, well, that's why things go smoothly at my house and in years they don't, which was a really mean answer because I really didn't mean it, but I was just, you know, I don't, I have rules for a reason. But um, my son-in-law had said to me, kids were giving a hard time. So he was annoyed. He wasn't in the best of moods. I said, see, you understand. You're feeling my pain or you're understanding. I got to remind him of that when, um, when I reprimand the kids. I have to remind them. Because sometimes when you take care of your grandkids, you have to switch shoes. Because sometimes you get grandma's shoes on and you can do what you want. And then there's other times you've got until the hun mommy shoes on and they do what you say and guys i didn't realize that this wasn't dry so here's what i'm doing i'm taking a baby wipes and i'm taking a tip off of the rod that i had it wasn't a flat tip dell rod i normally get this was a package that i found i think it was at hobby lobby or something they had a whole bundle of it and they were probably four feet tall long and they had a tip on them. so i know they i'm not sure what they were used for but i bought them to use to make my pegs. And right now I see that this, this glitter smeared here. So I'm taking the baby's wipes and I'm wrapping around the tip. Could be the tip of anything. Um, and I just happen to have the sitting here. So that's what I'm using. And I'm getting the, getting the glitter off that I smeared thinking that this was dry and it's gone. So what I'm gonna do since this is not dry, I'm going to tell you kind of how I pieced this one together. Um, again, folks asking about how I make the wide pieces. Absolute essential to make these. Make them efficiently, effectively, or whatever, is to have a wide inch printer, which is, is 12 inches wide. They've got one that prints now. Um, Epson just came out one with one that prints 18 inches and by I don't remember what it was that they had mentioned there, but it's kind of irrelevant to print 18 inches because your mat on your um, silhouette, which is what I use, is only 12 by 24. So to have a printer that printed 18 inches wide, I suppose it would help if you were turning something sideways. I'd have to really think about, I don't have paper that's 18 inches wide. I, I guess if I turn that 12 by 18, I still can't think of uh, any reason that I would use it be more effectively than using the 12, the 12 inch wide because it still it can only print so much on a 12 by 18 inch paper. Your paper's not 18 by 18. I think that's 
I know. Anyway, too far down that road. Um, what I did with this guy to make him two feet is I do piece them. And I kept, well, I can put him together. I don't care if he's wet up there. He's not wet down here. Um, I just grabbed my tape gun. All right. No, I don't want that one. I want this thin one. Um, that's got tape in it. I cut him right underneath his chin. So when I make my cuts, when I have to cut them so that I can fit him on my 12 by 18 inch paper, I, I um, try and make all my cut lines on something that when I cut it and put it together, I can glitter it and cover the cut line. You don't even know it's been print and cut um, because it's the front and back. You don't see any of the lines. Uh, if it's something that I'm cutting that is 12 by 24 inches and it will fit on a 12 by 24 inch um, mat or paper, then I, then I take my Epson, not my Epson, my HSN paper that I buy that's by Basil that is 12 um, inches, 12 by 12 squares. I will take that and tape them together. This tape is a quarter inch wide. I tape it just on the very edge of a 12 inch paper because people are still asking me where I get my 12 inch paper. I don't, I don't. There's two different things you can do. I can either use a 12 by 12, the basil now that I used to be able to get at HSN, which they are always out of. I have enough of it that I, I don't care when they get in stock because I got a bunch. But now it has this quarter inch border on here with the skew um, and the barcode. So that gives me the ability to run my run my um, quarter inch tape right down over that skew. And then, as you'll notice, these papers are printed on the back because I was printing out something that was supposed to be on letter paper, letter size paper, and um, my printer was all messed up the settings. I don't remember what happened, but anyway, I don't throw it away, I use it, and I'm gonna put that together from here to here. And this is a 12 by 24 inch paper that I can use on a 12 by 24 inch mat. It's really nice on the basil because it used to be I'd be a quarter inch short at the bottom. And sometimes that quarter inch was, it, it was enough to make a difference. Now with this, I get an exact 12 by 24 by taping it like this because this piece is a quarter of an inch where it's printed the barcode. Um, that is paper from basil, which is, I think it's advertised as... I can't remember the weight. If I thought it was 100 and that my other paper from Staples to 12 by 18 was 110 plus or something. I don't remember, but I found somebody explained to me about the paper weight. It was measured differently. I mean, it, it had different significances. With them. And so the higher number didn't always mean the thicker paper. And it de depended on two values that came into play. I know nothing about paper and how they measure it and about the weight or anything, so I don't remember. I only retain so much, and it's usually something I can use, um, and so I'll remember it. But anyway, this paper is not as nice and thick and heavy as the basil, uh, not the basil, the oh, staples paper that I get. And somebody asked me about that again today. Um, I think I... I don't remember if I responded or not. Staples Online has 12 by 20 or 12 by 18 inch paper, 100 weight, comes in sheets of 200. Um, you have to order it only online. You cannot get it in the stores. Um, here's the 18 inch. Then to get the 24, what I do, I'm a quarter inch off here and I don't have to be, but it's waste not, want not. I cut this in six inches to, to tack it on the end. So I take one 18 inch paper and I cut it in thirds. So I get three six inch wide pieces that I tape on the 18. 18 and, and six is 24, so in theory, I get 24 four inch long. However, it's the quarter of an inch off because I overlapped it. I overlapped um, the quarter of an inch. So it's not a true um, uh, 24 inches. I could take this and cut it in seven in, or six and a quarter inches and then just um find another use for the other piece but i very very rarely i just i very rarely use 12 by 24 because most things are too wide for 12 by 24 so i don't even bother using it but i do keep a bunch taped up usually i get taping and, and um 
in mass quantities and then to keep them on the side of the printer. And again, you, there's a ton here that I did and I haven't used them because I very rarely do. Like I said, for this one's 24 inches wide, but when you put it on the mat, he's wider than the mat. Has to be cut up. So that's what I do. Now I had to piece him together and I pieced him on the line under his, his chin. Now he had a black line going all the way around that, that showed you that it was under his chin. So what I'm gonna do is grab a glitter, which I have a rolling cart sitting over here. Every time I rearrange, I rededicate uh, pieces of previous used furniture and use it for something else. And I've got now a movable, <laughs> a movable cart. The reason I hadn't been using it, it's a bunch of drawers and on the top of it, I've got uh, a glass piece and I use it as a table on wheels. The problem was, and still is, is one of the wheels always falls off. But now when I roll it, I just pick up that corner and pull it because every single time it will fall off. It doesn't even accidentally sting on once in a while, always falls off. Now, I'm not liking this here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the little bit here and blend in. There's another little line here. And we're gonna use this as a shadow line because I like to cover everything up. I don't like anything showing. So I'm gonna do a little shadow. Shadowing here, he's a little bit darker under here because of his double chin. The old warthog here. I do believe that's the warthog, or he's called a warthog. Okay. I had a spot there that I could see the, the core. The only thing with printing, when you do your print rather than using your color cart stock, like I always did with the Cricut, is that um, it, you have white core paper. And when, that's why I always use the white outline because otherwise, um, it's more noticeable. This looks like it, it's to be this way and it is. And I like it better. So that's what I do. I put a white outline on everything. Oh, and what I was gonna say about the basil paper, one of the drawbacks with that is that I got into the weight and then got sidetracked, is that um, it's not as strong as the other. Now I need a scrap of paper because I just realized that when I cut this off, oh no, I'm okay. I got something else that goes in here. What goes in here, guys? Um, boy, I know what it is. It is a tail. Was that his tail? No, that's not his tail. That's the, I think that's a tail and I might not have put it on. I might not have cut it out yet. For his horns, I took and made an oval I cut it out, but again, I need a spot to tape it on. So I made an oval here, and then I used my dropper to color it and colored it the same color as the horn so that when I put it on, I don't have to worry about any bleep or any white or anything showing. But I know something goes down here, and I think it's the tail, and I think I forgot to do it. So moving on, I'm going to put this on. His other now when I put him together I do not want to put the other side together until I I want guys oh I don't want to put it together until I get the sticks on this first side then I put them together at the same time so that I can make sure they match up and this one I'm having a little bit of an issue with oh because I have a little of the color off there and got to kind of slide it to see where it fits. There we go. And this is a little bit open here, but that's okay when I put my sticks on. Um, I, my oval should have come out a little bit more, but when I put my sticks on, I'll put it over that to reinforce it. I have to wait for this one to dry. So this little guy is going over here and drying. Okay, I'm gonna put this one together. 
yesterday was, oh no, I just got through telling you, I'm not going to do that until they're dry. This one's dry, so I'm going to do him. I'm going to put him together. Here's the guy whose tails I'm missing. I can't think of what he was called. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe. You know, I should believe it. I actually should believe it. You know what I'm going to do on this guy? He's got an orange tuft of hair on the top of his head. I think I'm going to do a tuft of hair on his head now. Okay, and this is his tail. That's who this belongs to. And I did the wrong side, um, so I'm only going to be able to put one on right now. So <laughs> I'm batting a thousand. You can tell I haven't done videotaping in a while because I tried to be ready ahead of time. What I do to, to, to get as much work in at night and on the weekends as I can with the kids being out of school is I just print and cut. And then I dedicate time that I'm going to put it all together. Well, sometimes I forget to print something. And in this case, I forgot that. I didn't forget. I mean, it's a tail. Tail's two and going in the same direction. Okay. I'm going to put this one together, though, because I can put the tail on. Okay, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. Thinking. I don't like thinking. It gives me a headache. But it has to be done. I'm going to get a straw to put up over this so that the peg doesn't show. And let me see what color straw I want to use. I have a feeling, let me see, I think I'm going to use a gold chevron or a yellow, let me see. I'm going to put a straw over the peg because I don't want the peg of wood showing like it is. And yeah, I'm going to use the gold. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to slide the stick through and I leave about a half an inch at the end of the straw. And... Guys, it's very telling about my confrontation, um, that I do not like confrontation, um, and not to get along with anybody in my neighbors particularly, you know, it's just not fun. Um, and when my kids were little and everything, I always said, you know what, as parents, you don't get involved in, care in your parents' or your kids' problems, because you will find, after being a parent, your kid comes home crying, and oh, no, somebody's picking on me and whatever. So you decide to go have it out and talk to their parents because, of course, the other kid's always at, in the fault. We as parents, everybody is at fault but our kid. Our kid's just too good to have done that. Well, I learned they have to work it out themselves because they're out the next day playing in the street, having a ball like nothing ever happened, and you never speak to that neighbor again. So I've learned well, I shouldn't say I've learned. I learned that when my kids were growing up. Somebody gave me that advice. Said the kids will get over it and then we'll move on. Of course, I'm not talking about somebody having split a kid's face open or something. I'm talking about simple fighting. You push me off my bike. You come home and haven't got a mark on you and you're just crying like somebody's about to kill you. Those kinds of things. Even with my grandkids and their cousins, when I have my grandkids all playing together, um, they have to work it out themselves or, or they're all in trouble because that's what people, I mean, kids do. They blame the other one always, but they always forget to tell you how the story started. Now I'm going to forget you, forget telling you where I'm heading with the story. We're having a driveway widened so that we can fit more cars. As my family grows, my house doesn't. And, um, it just, it was a decision that, I'm so glad we made, but in the whole process of doing this, there was a lot of um, digging and um, getting everything ready to go in there and put a driveway, widen the driveway and have it so that the rain would wash off right and just all this stuff. So the guys had gone over and they were working on it and it started to rain or something and they had to leave and... And when they were putting some of their equipment down before it rained, they said, is it okay if we put it here? Or should we go check with the neighbor? Or what should we do? And I said, oh, no. He's, 
he's a super nice guy. He will not, you know, that's fine. He's not going to care. It's on the side of the house that all the grass is dead and ugly anyway. Um, there wasn't much. It was just a little bit between. And so it wasn't anything that was part of your landscaping or your front of your lawn or whatever. And they laid the equipment there. Or laid shovels and boards and stuff like that. And they didn't come back for a few days. And my son came over last Friday and to pick up his two that I take care of. And he said they were out laying the concrete. And I said, no, they're not. And he said, yeah, they are. I said, no, they're not. And he goes, can't, I can't believe it. They've been out there. Can't you hear them? I said, no, I, they're going to tell us because we were going to put handprints in the in the concrete. So they had to let us know when, when they were pouring it. So I went out there and I found my neighbor was throwing everything off of his lot. Throwing, he wasn't picking it up and moving it. And he didn't say anything to us. He was literally throwing it. And he was not happy. So I went over, by the time I realized what he had done, um, I was in back with the kids swimming, my, my grandkids and stuff. And I said, I, I can't do anything about it right now. So after the kids were all picked up, I went over there and knocked at the door and, and I apologized to him. And I said, I'm really, really sorry. I had no idea they were going to leave it there that long. And, you know, I really apologize. He said, oh, no, don't worry about it. It's not your, you know, you didn't do it. If they did it. And I said, I know, but, you know, they asked me if you would mind. And I figured if it was going to be a couple hours, they, I didn't think it was an issue. Well, then when they came back, the guys that were working on the drive felt terrible because they knew that he must have been upset. So they continued on. Oh, and then what they did is they parked a truck that, um, no, we had to move our cars out of the driveway. My husband moved his car to where this neighbor always parks his truck that he has, which was no big deal. I mean, it was right between our lot lines, and he parked the car out there because we had to have him out of the driveway and then pour the concrete. And so Sean took his truck and parked it in front of our house. Um, it wasn't like on the between or whatever. It was right smack in front by the mailbox. I thought, well, that was kind of weird. My husband said he did that on purpose. I said, oh, he did not. He's a nice guy. He's not going to do that. Still didn't think anything of it. Then when they started to pour the concrete, he had just mowed his lawn. He had just mowed it. And, and it hadn't been but a couple days. And he they started to pour the concrete and he started up his mower to mow because if he mowed between the houses, he knew all the grass was going to fly on the wet concrete. Yeah, anyway, end of story is, is, is he started to do that. And my husband ran out and stopped him. He said, Sean, you know, we'll go ahead and take care of all this. We'll pick everything up and I'll mow your lawn. I'll finish it for you. Don't worry about it. But um, he said, you know, I don't know what the what he said, but that was the last word spoken. My husband was out front yesterday or the day, the day before with the neighbor and just chit-chatting by the drive. And he came out and they said hi. And he wouldn't even look at him across the street. So I think he's mad guys what would you do in a case like that i mean i already apologize i i don't know what else to do but anyway i'm going to pause here guys because i got to fix this tail and i'm going to come back and do the fur and show you how to do that and then i want everybody to tell me what should i do about the neighbor to make peace thanks be back shortly bye-bye i forgot to sync it up Duh. Hi guys, I'm back again. Been gone longer than I expected because my husband was getting hungry, so I had to go make dinner. I'm having major issues with my internet where my printer will not connect, so I can't do that tail. <laughs> so I decided to move on to something else because I was getting too frustrated and mad. So I moved on. Oh, what I could do, I did cut the hair out. Um... I'll explain to you because I can't, I could probably do a screen, I can do a screen recording and show you. Um, hopefully, I'm wa watching my computer reload over here. Okay, right now I'm going to be doing uh, the two foot of Rafiki holding Simba uh, at his birth. <laughs> no, on the rock when he put him up, <laughs> put him up, held him up. Um... I caught him at the arms. Then I add my little pet, my little tab here because this is what I use for connecting the two. Works great. I do have a 0.05 offset of white on them. 
I have him all glittered up and I have glossy, glossy accents made by Ranger that you can get at any hobby craft store or online, anywhere. Accent Essentials by Ranger. Again, that's Accent Essentials by Ranger. And Shannon, I know that you tell me if I just wrote everything down and copy and pasted it. Um, I was doing that on my videos. I stopped. I, I'm, I'm all over the place, guys. It's just, it's me. It's who I am. And, and sometimes talking is easier for me than doing certain things. So anyway, I'm going to put his arms on. Actually, I got them on the one side. I'm going to take or glue those when I get his glue sticks in. Um, and as you notice on him, he's leaning forward like this when he's holding him out. He's not standing on his toe holding them up. Well, he was holding them up a little bit. I lied. He wasn't standing like that. I lied. So the whole thing I was going to show you is not going to work because I'm wrong. I put this peg on wrong. I was thinking he was holding more stretched out. I got to look at this real quick and make sure I don't put this on wrong. And I'm probably going to have to put this leg on again. We'll find out if it's if the surgeon here, Dr. Jill, can get this off without ruining him. We'll find out. Okay. And so far, it's not looking good. So, where's my spatula or blade or whatever, anything, just to get this off without cutting myself too. Now I'm going to have to probably put the foot on again. That'll give me something else to print once I figure out what's going on with my printer. I have another stick on here, so I'm going to put this leg on again. I'll just go over the existing one so it's not going to be messed up, guys. So I'm going to do a mistake, and you'll see me fix it. Uh, just print another foot and leg or wherever I have to to cut it off and go over the existing one so there's no wrinkles or anything. Now, I've got to figure out how I want him standing. I think it's that way on his um, his flat of his foot, whatever, why they call that called. I don't know why I was thinking, guys. I mean, I was ha must have been having an out-of-body. I do that frequently. I had to have been because for some reason I was thinking he was supposed to be stretched way out, and he's not. So the thing I was going to show you, I'm not going to need to do. Um, I was going to show you how to do weights when your things tip on their bases, what you can do to weight them down so that they don't tip over. When one side's heavier than the other on a two-foot piece, and you go and you put it on your base and it tips over, tips to the side and it's hard to get it to stand up. I was going to show you a trick to that, but now since I figured out um, I didn't need <laughs> need to do it on this one because it was wrong. I was doing it wrong anyway. I guess we'll save that little trick for another time. Alrighty. Now let's get these sticks put in here and get him put together. I have all this stuff I need to get done. <clears throat> and the clock is ticking for me here. I want to get all these things done when, when I don't have the kids on, on a weekend when it's um, when they're out of school. Whoops, that went flying. And I never seem to get done what I planned. Last weekend, my husband went out of town and I got a ton done. A ton. I think I got six orders done. Yeah, I just I got a ton done. That included going to my daughter's house for dinner and um, see my grandkids. If I don't see them, a day goes by. It seems like a week because I'm so used to seeing them every day. That's why I call them every morning just to check and see how they're doing. We had the we had a pool party at my house yesterday, and um, in the movie theater, outdoor movie um, camp out at night. Well, we usually do it at my house, but now my daughter's got the the large lot and it's kind of up being in the northern woods in the cabin. It's a, camp, it's a log home likes to do it at her house. And I'll tell you, crushed, I was not. Disappointed, no. I was thrilled. The more my kids will do at their homes, the better, because I'm starting to wind down of all of that. So we um, 
One thing nice is because my husband had finished off the garage, we were able to use that um, to put up our tables for food because now it didn't smell like car grease. And all we did was leave our kitchen door open so it would cool, be cool in there. We kept the kitchen door or the door, to, yeah, the kitchen door open close to the garage and left the garage door open, shut and went to the outside so that the air conditioner would run into the garage since it's all insulated and is heated. It just doesn't have central air. But my husband came up with a grand idea that we're going to call somebody and see if they can vent it so that we can use it in the summer and have it because it's going to, it was 91 yesterday and it's supposed to be hot and humid all for the next two weeks except a lot of rain so it's a lot of in and out so we like to use the garage for drying towels and uh escaping children things like that so we don't have everybody in and out of the house soaking wet isabel my precious little isabel um, for some reason or another, we I haven't figured out why. She Every time my kid, my grandkids get out of the pool, they say, oh, I'm done swimming for the day. So they go, they go in and they get dressed. And Isabel never, not even accidentally, never brings out her towel or her swimsuit. She always comes out dressed and leaves the wet things on the hardwood floors. So I'm forever calling her back in to tell her to pick everything up. And... 20, 30 minutes after the first shot, she's, oh, she, want, she decides eh, she's going to go back in the pool again. So she puts on yet another swimsuit and gets ready and does the same thing and leaves her clothes on the floor. So I call her back in, say, come in, pick up your clothes. Half hour later, she decides, oh, she's done for the day. Mind you, it's only 11 o'clock in the morning and basically the day hasn't even started yet. But I argue with her. I don't know why it is that... I don't think it's that they even, they're trying to tell you they're done swimming when actually what it really is, is they just want to get out and go swinging, play, play on the swings or on their little, their little four wheelers or something they want to do. And so they tell you they don't want to swim anymore because they don't want to play in wet clothes. So they change their clothes because they all do it. But Isabel is the only one that leaves all the wet ones laying all over the hardwood floors. No, I shouldn't say the only one. Her sister Kendall. They both do. But anyway, I was heading somewhere with this, and I lost where I was going. So forget that story. But we did have our Fourth of July annual party at, at my house, and they did the movie at Amy's, and I opted out to that one. But they said they had a blast, and I'm sure they did. But my idea of camping and roughing it. It's going to a Holiday Inn and they have an outdoor swimming pool. That's about as rough as I go. And, yeah, I don't do camping. I never did really get into camping. But my kids are all, I don't know where they got it from, because a lot of times they pick up things because that's what they did as a child. And we did go camping quite a bit because... Um, that's what every kid did in Wisconsin. You go camping. I don't know why. Don't like it. But um, I don't have to. I don't have to go for the outdoor movies. And they put up tents, and the whole her whole yard's full of tents because every family puts up their own tent. And there's this mosquito tent up, and there's some place where they put up the projector and the big screen, and it's a drive-in movie that you walk in. But the kids love it. And when we do it at my house, I have a popcorn popper, uh, old-fashioned popcorn popper. One year my kids got me the outdoor screen, another year they got me an outdoor or uh, old-fashioned popcorn popper and a slushy maker and all of these things that I need to entertain their children. How do you like that? Because why would Papa and I need a slushy or a popcorn maker? Well, the kids love it. When we have the outdoor annual 4th of July parties. We set up the popcorn, old-fashioned popcorn maker and slushy maker. And not last year, but the year before, and I only did it once because it turned out to me it was adorable, but um, a lot of work. 
is I made candy bags and set up just like a candy store out at our, we have a little tiki bar that my husband built out back. And so I set it up as a little candy shop and put this big candy and nickel bags of candy. And the kids all had changed to or had all been given change to buy candy at the candy shop. And then they all drove around the little electric four wheelers or dirt bikes or whatever, four wheelers, I think they're called, little RV cars or whatever. And they would drive around and drive up to the little bar and buy. And then they all drove and parked their cars in the front of the screen. It was so cute. Of course, that didn't work when the movie started because you couldn't see past them. But um, they had a blast buying their own candy, their bags of candy. And it was so much fun to do. And it was, and those are kind of memories that are so much fun to scrapbook and have for the rest of their lives. But uh, I can't do that anymore. I cannot do that. Believe it or not, I'm running out of the energy. Just taking everything I have to keep up with me as it is. My um, son is getting married on September 27th. He and his fiance just bought a home, which they, they just bought a home last, not even a year ago. It was last July. They bought their first home, which was my daughter, Amy, who's a realtor. It was her first, um, first home that she sold, or her sold. She was not the, she, the first time she had, yeah, sold a home. And, um, not even a year later, they found what Kiki calls her um, rest of her life home, both of theirs. They got a, found it on a big, big yard lot like my daughter. In the backyard is farm, and which will probably not be used for years to come. It won't be, it will be continue to be used as a farm. It's out in that air, kind of out in the country, but um, they bought a 3,500 square foot home. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. But um, the first thing what they said is they're gonna wanna start doing the holidays. And I said, well, you guys are gonna have to fight all this out because um, Amy claimed those when she bought her house. And I'm so happy that they're they all get to do this now and I can go home at the end of the holiday, at the end of the day, I can go home and go to bed and not worry about overtired kids, over sugared up, things like that. But they're moving on the 18th or 15th, 18th of this month. They close and we'll be moving. The appraisal came back on the house for higher than what they paid on it. So they were thrilled to death with that, talking instant equity, but Amy, so um worked with them she was the first one she's they she sold the first home to them and bought they um bought the first home with them with her she's done numerous between but she they were the first on um her first listing and her first selling so um they're pretty excited about moving and amy was pretty excited too that everything has, has gone so smoothly other than still has her court date coming up. I guess it's the 8th of this month, the first meeting they have regarding her ex who's trying to get more placement. So keep her in, keep her in your prayers for that. The kids do not like to be away from their siblings at all. And I'm hoping that everything stays as is especially now with the new baby because the Charlie and Wyatt are six and seven just turned six or seven six and, and seven and seven and a half and just turned six and now they got two two little brothers one that's three weeks old and one that's three years old and they hate being away from them they really really have a hard time with it then they've got the older the older two that are 14 and 12 or 11 will be 12 and they really don't like to be separated. The kids are really close. So I'm hoping that everything, he travels a lot. 
and he doesn't really want the kids. He just doesn't want her to have them. And I won't get into that because I have been trying really hard and it's been three days now. For, so for me, that's a record that I haven't spent my day ruling over him. It's unfortunate, I'm trying really hard to find it in my heart to forgive. But every time I start to forgive and get over it, he does something like this. Not a very nice person. That's why um, I'm hoping that it is something that doesn't take much to arrive at when a, in a study. They'll be fighting the support Supreme Court, I imagine. <laughs> I don't know. For my kids, I wish all this would. I keep telling them. Uh, telling all my kids, this is why I have such an issue with divorce. It's the aftermath. You got your, what was it? Um, and he's a narcissist. And there was an article that it said uh, it's one thing to marry a narcissist, but it's even worse divorcing one. They never get over it. And he is a book textbook narcissist very unfortunate okay guys there we go enough said about him any of you have ever had to deal with anything like that or have any insight to how you handle it and I'm talking not somebody just calling names but a true textbook narcissist there's only, I've done a lot of studying read books and books and books trying to come up with what you do to handle it. And it's not something once they reach adults that you can fix because they don't ever admit that there's anything wrong. The world is wrong. It's really hard. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how I pieced together him standing on the rock. Um, this rock that he, that he was standing on the end of was the the image itself was really long and by the way somebody's asking where i get my files and i get all, almost 99 percent, probably 100 percent at this time on etsy i used to do it other ways but now i buy all my all my files i buy them or they're given to me by the whoever if somebody sends me a file of something. Um, Divine Digital Diva, somebody will get, have something designed and send the file to me. This was from a, a file off of um, Etsy. And I had to piece him up. I had to short or make this shorter. So what I did is I cut it off and then I went in and rather than cut it up and make it different, I can't remember, I'm trying to think. Oh, I couldn't shrink it. Normally I would have smushed it together, but I needed where his legs to go to still line up. So what I did is I just took my knife and cut off the edge, just freehand, cut it off, and then glittered it, and that was all I had to do. I'm going to put him back on. i got to figure out which one goes on where. And, oh, I've got a horn over here. Okay. Now, I think this is the right way, yes. And I forgot to put my tabs on this one, which I knew when I did it, because I chewed myself out after I realized I didn't put the tabs on the feet when I cut it out. This one had to cut, be cut in more pieces because it was quite, quite a bit larger. Um, and it, it, they, they can be quite a bit larger. Two feet is two feet. However, when you're cutting them, there's a big difference um, because of the width. You know, even though it says it's two feet, the, the width comes into play a lot. I keep a little thing of, of scrap paper strips so that if I do exactly what I did here and forgot to add my little tabs, I'm going to have to put it together with a strip of white paper. And I'm going to run my tape gun all the way down and then I will just cut it as needed. I've got it all lined up here. 
and we're going to go with my first one here. There's a couple ways I do this. Sometimes I put the tab on the back and then work from the front and, and just stick them down. I'll show you. That one I just went from the back and lined it up. Why well, can't I already got one stuck down? Never mind. You're going to have to watch me do it this way. So that's the way I did it. And cut that off. And there we go. And there we go. I'm going to cut, clip these from this side. Oh, that one just missed a little bit of white offset. So there's a, a little tiny corner here of white offset that got missed. So I'm going to take a little piece of white paper and this isn't going to make a big difference, but I'm going to do it because I want to. Don't want that showing, but I'm going to do it from the back. So see guys, you're getting to, be, to see a lot of oopsies on my part today. Okay, that's fine. And then I'll put glitter on it when I get to it. And why was I thinking there's something else that goes on this one? Where's that tail go? That must be Simba's tail. Yeah, it is. I was gonna say, this dude's got a tail on. What's he looking at? Okay, I think I'll take my knife and cut that off. This is going to go this way and this way. Got it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put all my sticks on the back of him. Uh, what I was going to say on, on the screenshot, I'm going to tell you just in case I forget and don't do the screenshot. On the hair, this little tuft of hair that was on the top of Timon's head. If you go, this little orange hair that I want out of, uh, to do on the fake fur. If you find a piece that you want to have, like the tail here, for instance, to cut it out, what you can do is you can go on your um, software and cut that piece off using your little knife tool in the software. Cut it off and use that as your pattern. You can lay down the back of your back, um, back of your fake fur because you're gonna have to do a flip side anyway. So you can cut you. I don't. I man, I'm having a hard time explaining this, and so now I feel like I just stumbled over over everything I was trying to explain. Anyway, um, if you cut whatever it is out that you want to cut out of that fake fur out of the software and cut it out of paper, you can use that as your pattern to cut your fur out. And I think I'm probably gonna have to try and remember and do a video so that you all don't think I'm crazy because I have no idea if what I said made any sense at all. But, um, haven't given an update on my mother yet. Um, the palliative group was in to work with her two weeks ago and called me um, to let me know they were changing medications yet again. Um, nothing seems to be working and um, was told again that um, I shouldn't go up there yet they would call me when it was okay and I do realize now what they meant one of the reasons this is because it's really upsetting to her and she gets very very confused and cries and cries and then it takes takes a lot out of her then she stops eating and it doesn't go well um, when I go um, she's got her, the way that with the dementia the way that her brain works they tried to explain it to me so i could understand and i'll never understand because it's, it's when you're going through it it's just hard to comprehend um but just the way the brain functions there there isn't a lot that can be done it is what it is and uh the reason that it's all directed at me is because 
I'm the one that has been the most involved over the past years in her life, and that's the one she remembers most is me. So lucky me um, is it's I'm doing better. I did I did go to a therapist and my doctor and whatever, and I am doing better because it has been extremely hard. I would say I'm doing a lot better actually um, because I'm getting getting where I understand it's not me. Uh, got a call the other day from the nurse and she said she wanted to let me know that my mother's brother came up to visit. I thought, oh, well that was nice. And I and she said, and, and there was a painting that I'd given my mother and she didn't want it. It was a painting from, from Venezuela that I had gotten from my sister-in-law and is is something that's a, that's a value, not a value financially, I mean, it's a, it means something to me. And I, and, um, as a gift from my sister-in-law. So I had it in my mother's apartment, but when my when her, her brother went up to visit, she, they sent the painting home with him, which I have no idea why they did that. I still, I just don't get it, why, why they would send my painting home with him, but they did. So I called them to tell them, you know, um, that I would, when I was in town sometime, I would pick it up. And I didn't know which one of my, my uncle's it was because one's got Parkinson's and um, he's extremely bent over and the other one does not. So I said, is he walking straight or bent over? And she said, no, he was walking straight. So I said, okay, then that would have been Richard. So I called Richard, Richard and I couldn't, I didn't have his number. So I called his brother. I thought I didn't have his number. So I called my other uncle, Roger, to ask him for the phone number. And, um, then I found found it. Before she, they were busy and said they'll give me a call right back. And then I found a habit, but I rather than have it under his last name, I had it in my contacts under his first name. So I found that I had it. So I called him and asked if he'd been up to see my mother. And he said, no, he hadn't been up there. And I said, oh, well, it must have been Roger then. He said, I don't know. I don't think he went up there either. I said, well, they said one of her brothers was up there and you're the only two brothers you've got. So I called my other uncle. He said, no, he hadn't been up there. And I thought, well, who on earth went to visit her that they think is a brother? Well, I come to find out it was my brother that they were talking about, not her brother. So anyway, after I finally figured out that's who it was that went to visit, um, I was happy about that because it made her happy and didn't distress her when he left. But they, I'm not real sure if she knew who he was. She, they, my brother said they, he, she introduced herself or him to everybody as her son. So he felt, felt like she did know who he was, which very well could be. But um, anyway, so that went really well. My brother said it wasn't there long. He said it was clear that her memory was going. I got a gap here, guys, that I'm going to have to fill. So you're going to have to watch me do something very creative to fill this gap. Don't know how I got such a large gap. This bottom one cut way off but I will fix it. You will see, I don't know how, I'll probably have to come back to it, but I will get it fixed. And this video is probably gonna be way too long. So it'll be like the never ending story. But now I am going to pause you while I get rummage through everything that I have to find something. I'm just gonna show you one thing that I did I've done it in different widths, is I made my own garland of the tutus for my um, ballerina girls. The, the, uh, the unicorns are in all these um, pastel colors. This one's for a 15 inch tall one this size, and then I have one hanging up back there. I made yards and yards of that stuff, different colors um, of my own with tool that I had ordered from China. Um, so that I could put those together easier. I'm looking for something to fill this void. So I'll be back in a flash. Um, or I'll be back shortly anyway. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm back. What I'm using to fill that void is floral accents. Um, it's, it's, got like grass and moss and pieces of bark and all sorts of stuff like that and it's in in 
any anywhere that you can buy um, silk flowers or dried flowers or anything like that, this is one of the things that people use to accent their, their floral arrangements. And what I'm using it for is greenery at the top of the rock. And maybe there wasn't greenery growing there, but there is in mine. Um, because when I think about it, there's moss, there's all sorts of things on mountainsides. It doesn't, and I'm sure there was trees up there somewhere. They didn't show that part in the movie, guys. So, you know, I'm making this partly my own story. But I'm putting the little pieces of bark that I find in there. And it is working perfect to fill these gaps. And it is giving it the, the extra touch that um, I like to add. I, I will take pictures, but you can kind of see close up there. And the void I'm talking about, this piece, and probably I have no idea why, but for some reason it cut off, uh, cut out off. And I didn't think it was a big deal because when I put it together, I, I just thought as long as it lined up here. But the thing was, is when I put it on, I lined it up from here rather than from up here. And this is where the void is up underneath where this leg is. Um, I filled that one in that showed a little bit more, so now you can't tell. But this works great and pretty easy to work with. I just put down a little hot glue and uh, warning, be very, very careful because this stuff is not solid. And if you push it down as though it were solid, you're going to burn yourself. Um, I'm going to put a little piece of bark right there. Again, I don't think it takes much at all to, to fill this. But I cannot leave something showing like that. And, whoops. We have bad storms here. I tell you guys, it's raining every single day. This is so depressing. Really not fun, especially when you're taking care of care of uh, kids that want to be outside playing and they can't. And inside, what you have to offer for toys, <laughs> it changes as your kids get as your grandkids get older. You know, they outgrow toys a whole lot faster than we did when we were kids. Man, I remember playing with dolls all the way up into middle school. Now, by the time these kids are seven, eight years old, they don't want dolls anymore. They want to be the doll. My little granddaughters are so into dressing up and makeup and nails and all of that. Of course, I wasn't into any of that because I, I was uh, chewed my fingernails. Painting them wasn't part of the game. Didn't taste good with polish on it. They were better to eat when they didn't have anything on them, except for dirt, lots of dirt. Okay, yes, I like that. So, let me do the other side. What else was I gonna do this on this one? I don't know, I'm gonna do the other side here. And there's different kinds of, of this that you can get. I've got one that it's more like a moss, um, but I use that more when I'm doing um, sea, under the sea type centerpieces. I use them with my shells and fishes and things like that. It's, it's a softer sponge, more like a sponge. This is very, very dry and almost, it's not as easy to work with as the other stuff because it breaks pretty easy. Moss doesn't, but this one looks more like pine tree droppings or, or some sort of tree that you would see in the wild. Better than the moss, I think. At least to me. Well, oh, I'll tell you the what here. Um, I don't, oh, I was going to say about we, when we got together yesterday and was taking pictures of, of all the grandkids. Every 4th of July, I do a, a Fourth of July video um, for the family of our party or whatever, and 
I was looking at my five month old Mila and my two week old, three week old um, Burke. And Burke went to the doctor. He's in the one percentile with his adjusted age because he was a few weeks early. He's in the one percentile. He's so tiny, so tiny. And Mila is in the 100 percentile. So I laid them both out and took a picture of them laying side by side. And it is hilarious because me, like Carol, you said something about it. Mila looked like she was a year older. They're just a few months apart. Um, but Mila's huge. She's already wearing 12 to 18 months clothes. I think she's 22 pounds. And that's strictly with nursing. And her, my daughter's pediatrician just loves that because apparently um, he likes fat babies because that's something to do with the fat is what develops the brain. And I said, with the size of Mila, she ought to be growing up to be an Einstein because she's huge. But it's hard on me because I'm the one that takes care of her and she kills my back. She's huge. Absolutely. And Charlie always wants to carry her. And Charlie, or Wyatt, who is... My daughter Amy's kids are all miniatures. They're all so tiny. And um, I think Wyatt, who is six might weigh about 35 pounds. My son's kids actually, to come to think of it, my son Andrew's kids are all, his kids are skinny too, real tiny and skinny. Amber's the only one that's got the, the big kids. My kids were all average, but none of them were tiny. But man, these guys got some tiny. My son's kids are real tall. Both of them are tall, but haven't got a bit of fat on them. They look like walking skeletons are so skinny my daughters are just little but my sons are skinny my daughter said to me yesterday give him sneak some breast milk into beta's of her breast milk into beta cereal because my daughter produces i think pure cream her milk is is got calories she wanted me to, to give some to beta which my daughter, my daughter-in-law and my son both said, if they've got any left over, give it to her. And I tried to give her some Friday, but she didn't want any. I don't know if she didn't like it or, or if she just didn't want milk, period. But couldn't get her. I don't think a bottle here and there is going to help her anyway. Fatten her up, though. So skinny. Oh, okay. I think this is going to wrap this one up, maybe. Yep, that did it. Ooh, I don't know why I'm getting these strings anymore. Or I didn't used to. There we go. Oh, don't like that. Okay, so let's try. I have to cut this stick down a little bit. It's too long. Way too long. Yeah, but, yep, just need to trim down the stick and we're good on this one. And I will take a group shot when I'm done here. Um, done on this one. I have other one, pieces to put together, but I will save you that. Oh, no, because I have to show you something on Simba. Let me put this one aside. Let me cut this first. It's a little bit too long. My shot for the vest, it missed it. Not my strong suit. Okay, I'm gonna put that right there and get in the corner. Simba, what I did on, on Simba is the leg where I cut it off. I had some issues going on trying to figure out where to, how to cover the seam. So then I started to get trying to be innovative and um, experiment with my distress inks and distress ink pens that I bought because I thought I had to have so I bought every single pack they have every color because I knew it was going to be uh something I had I just was not going to be able to do without and I lost my wipes to clean my table off guys there's never go smooth for me here I got that greenery I don't want on here. 
and I haven't cut the tail out yet because I'm having internet problems. Okay, so this one was, but I couldn't cover up the seam, so I tried to get, the seam went here and here, and it was right in the middle of the leg. This one I could have handled, the one cutting through the body, but I couldn't handle it cutting the leg off. So what I ended up doing is experimenting with the ink, the distressing, that didn't work, and experimenting with the distressed crayons, that didn't work. It just made it look horrible, and I thought, I have to remake these whole pieces. The head's one piece, this hip's apart, the tail's apart, and then the this part of the body. This one was a pain to do because he's really big when you make him two feet. So rather than redo the whole thing, I cut the leg off, and that way I only had to deal with one seam to cover up. That's how I did that one. So um, when you make a mistake or if something isn't working out, uh, that's when you have to just really try and think outside the box. Um, I'm usually not in the box. Uh, a lot of what I do doesn't make sense to me, and I'm sure to a lot of you, but it's okay. It doesn't have to make sense as long as it works. So now I got rid of my mistake there, and I will fix it up with, I just bent it. Caught my hand on it and bent it. Doggone it. I have to take it off from this way. Um, anyway, that will show you how to, so you don't have to redo a complete piece. You can just cut out the portion. Um, I've done that on numerous pieces where if I've made a mistake, I just cut off the portion that has to be fixed. And this wasn't really a mistake. It's that I accidentally pushed it down wrong. Okay. And then I'm going to have to put his tail on because of this one. I forgot the tab as well. This tail is this tail. This is, yep, needs to be up in the air. So I'm going to get my little piece of white and mm -hmm. oh man. I think it's probably getting time for me to call it a day. It's what happens when I don't when I had been away for too long. Okay, we're gonna try this again. There we go. And it's got white showing, so I need to shave that little tiny bit of white off. Because I can see it. There we go. Done. And that was real short quick I just wanted to show you when you make a mistake on a piece that you're piecing together even if you're not piecing together let's say you're doing some whatever you're doing adding glitter whatever whatever the case may be you can fix a lot of mistakes you made by just simply um, adding the piece cutting the piece over it over your mistake so that is going to be it on this one. There will be other pieces that are done um, that I will be uploading pictures of that I'm not going to be filming. But because there's a total of six pieces and I think I showed you one, two, three, four, two more than I'm not. Anyway, um, thanks for watching and I hope everyone has a great night. Bye-bye and a happy fourth. I'm using my TV changer, guys, to turn it off. I got to get another job.